what if we told you that the French Revolution was the beginning of a new era of chaos? Post-Revolution France was a far cry from the France of old. The revolution left no aspect of French society untouched. Its consequences, both immediate and long-term, were profound and far-reaching. So what happened after the French Revolution? What unfolded in France after 1799? Let's start with the immediate effects. The revolution marked the end of absolute monarchy in France. Louis XVI met his fate at the guillotine in 1793, and his execution sent a clear message. The age of kings was over. In its place, a new era was born, one where the people held the power. But the transition was far from smooth. In the power vacuum left by the monarchy, chaos reigned. The reign of terror, a bloody period of political purging ensued. This period recorded 16,594 official death sentences. An additional 10,000 to 12,000 people had been executed without trial, and 10,000 had died in prison. Amidst this turmoil, a figure emerged from the shadows, Napoleon Bonaparte. Napoleon Bonaparte, later known by his regnal name Napoleon I, was a French emperor and military commander who rose to prominence during the French Revolution. In the immediate aftermath of the French Revolution, France was in turmoil. The government was unstable, the economy was in shambles, and the nation was under threat from foreign powers. Napoleon, then a young and ambitious military leader, seized this opportunity to rise up the ranks by leveraging his military successes and rallying the support of the public. In the year 1799, he staged a coup popularly known as the 18th Brumaire, overthrowing the French government and establishing himself as the first consul of France. This was a turning point in French history. France was no longer a chaotic republic, it was now under the firm and decisive rule of a single leader. But Napoleon didn't stop there. In 1804, he crowned himself Emperor of the French and ruled the nation from 1804 to 1814, and briefly again in 1815. Although this might seem like a return to monarchy, Napoleon's rule was different and deeply transformative. He implemented many revolutionary principles such as equality before the law, which were enshrined in the Napoleonic Code, a legal system that is still the basis of French civil law today. Napoleon's reign, while being autocratic in nature, introduced significant changes in France's education system, administration, legal structure, and military, thus laying the groundwork for France to become a major power in Europe. But Napoleon's reign would not be without its own set of challenges. Under his rule, France embarked on a series of conflicts that would engulf Europe for over a decade. This period was commonly referred to as the Napoleonic Wars. You see, before Napoleon took over France, the French Revolution posed an implied threat to other monarchies in Europe. So in 1792, Austria, Naples, Prussia, Spain and the Great Britain formed the first coalition to crush the French Republic. This coalition ended with a victory for France when Napoleon forced the Austrians to accept his terms in the Treaty of Campo Formio in 1797. The First War ended, but the Great Britain remained an anti-French power. The Second Coalition was formed in 1798 by Austria, Great Britain, the Kingdom of Naples, the Ottoman Empire, Papal States, Portugal, and Russia. During the War of the Second Coalition, the French Republic suffered from corruption and division. Lazare Carnot, the war minister who had guided France to many victories, was no longer in service, and Napoleon, the main hero of the last war, had gone to campaign in Egypt. Stripped of two of its most important military figures from the previous conflict, the Republic of France suffered many defeats until Napoleon returned to France on August 23, 1799. He seized control of the French government on November 9, 1799, in the coup of 18 Brumaire and then reorganized the French military to victory. On the 25th of March, 1802, the Treaty of Amiens was signed. This marked the final collapse of the Second Coalition and resulted in peace between the UK and France. For the first time in 10 years, all of Europe was at peace. However, this peace was only temporary as both sides dishonored the treaty. Hostilities between Great Britain and France returned. In April, 1805, Napoleon was declared the King of Italy, and another coalition was formed. The Austrians began the war by invading Bavaria, and in the late July of the same year, French army marched out from Boulogne to confront them. This conflict primarily involved France against the Third Coalition, comprising Britain, Austria, Russia, and others. On December 2, 
In what is considered his greatest victory yet, Napoleon crushed the joint Austro-Russian army in the Battle of Austerlitz. This victory resulted in the Treaty of Pressburg in December 1805, where Austria ceded significant territories to France. Within months of the Third Coalition's defeat, the Fourth Coalition was formed. This coalition consisted of Prussia and Russia with Saxony, Sweden, and the United Kingdom also contributing. Napoleon faced the Fourth Coalition from 1806 to 1807 and won a series of battles for France, including the Battle of Jena Auerstedt, which resulted in the occupation of Berlin and the defeat of Prussia. The conflict of the Fourth Coalition War concluded with the July 1807 Treaty of Tilsit and fully established the dominance of France in continental Europe. Yet, it didn't end there. Napoleon went on to fight and win two more wars from the years 1808 to 1812, but it was his audacious invasion of Russia in 1812 that marked a turning point for his winning streak. In 1812, while the Peninsular War against Spain, Portugal and the UK was ongoing, Napoleon invaded Russia with the French-led Grande Armée, consisting of 650,000 men. By September 14, 1812, the Grande Armée captured Moscow, however, the Russians used the scorched earth tactic, a military strategy of destroying everything including crops, livestock, buildings, and infrastructure, to render the invasion useless. The army spent a month in Moscow but was ultimately forced to march back. Cold, starvation, and diseases had death a horrible blow to Napoleon's force, and by November when the Grande Armée crossed the Berezina River, only 27,000 fit soldiers remained. With the historic defeat of the Grande Armée and the depleted army of Russia, Prussia and Austria saw an opportunity. They joined alliance with Russia, while Spain, Portugal and the UK intensified their efforts in the still ongoing Peninsular War. The Grande Armée eventually depleted but the Allies agreed to preserve the coalition until Napoleon's total defeat. On 6 April 1814, Napoleon abdicated and the First Treaty of Paris signed on 30 May 1814 officially ended the War of the Sixth Coalition. The victors exiled Napoleon to the island of Elba, and although he attempted a return in 1815, he was defeated at the Battle of Waterloo and exiled again to the island of St. Helena, where he died on 5 May 1821. The members of the Sixth Coalition restored the French Bourbon monarchy in the person of Louis XVI, and on the 20th of November 1815, the Second Treaty of Paris was signed, officially marking the end of the Napoleonic Wars as we know it. Are you hungry for knowledge, looking to uncover history like never before? Then hit that subscribe button, join us every Tuesday and Friday for new videos, and every other day for new shorts. Thank you and have a good day.